Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, the world's greatest redneck. And I've been watching Winky's workshop there, and Winky's been building vice stops for his uh, mill vice. And that's prompted me to, to get busy and do something about mine. I've got a, a new mill, but the old stop it doesn't fit. So I'm going to have to do some modifications to make it better. And that's what it's all about today. Let's, let's just get on with it. This is my new caliper. I was on Brian Block's channel and he was talking about good tools or worse tools. And I said, well, I got a new Mitsubishi caliper the other day. <laughs> He's right back and answered, you, you mean Mitsubishi or Mitotoyo? Uh, yeah, I messed that one up, didn't I? Anyway, I've been watching... Uh, Winky, and he's been playing with uh, several iterations of a uh, vice stop. And this is the one I had on the old vice that I use on the Grizzly. As you can see, the holes are probably a little bit too small, and they're definitely too close together. So I was thinking that I need to modify this to have pretty much the same thing on on this vise. Now one of the things I've been using on this vise is this stop right here. This is one I made after watching Tom Lipton make a vise stop one day. So it's it's another Lipton imitation. But I like I like this one also because it's pretty handy to stick up inside the vise and you know further down or whatever. Although the other one does about everything I need. So what we're going to do today, we're going to we're going to turn this into something that works right here, okay? So the easiest way to figure out where those holes are, or rather how far apart they are, is to take my Mitsubishi <laughs> or maybe Mitsutoyo uh, calipers and measure it across there. And they get 3.6, uh, 4.366. All right. Then I measure one of these guys, and I get 0.496. So I'll subtract this from the overall size across both bolts, and I'll come up with a difference of 3.871. So I had to turn on that loud compressor so I could get some air pumped up to get this thing out of the uh, out of the out of the out of the, sleeve, out of the spindle here. some other stuff a little uh, we need uh, we need a drill chuck in there and not uh, not a collet so let me put up all the stuff here and I'll come back with the right equipment all right, I stuck that little booger in my mill vise with a half inch uh, parallel under it. And now I'm just going to remove that half inch parallel so it doesn't get in the way when I start drilling. And this is, I got a set of thick parallels for uh, use here. I had asked it one day during the discussion, and uh, Stan said half inch. And I thought, well, it seems kind of, kind of big, but. I'd be willing to bet Stan knows what he's talking about, so later on that night, I ordered these guys, and they turned out to be just right. So uh, me, I said I was going to get a chuck, and I'm still going to get a chuck. Hang on. I had to reposition things a little bit there, but now I do, I do have a drill chuck in there. And this hole is actually a metric size, I think, but I'm going to have to drill it out to half inch to fit these guys back here in the back, you know, on the vise. And then I'm going to have to move down to this next one and drill a, a completely fresh hole. So what we'll do is load up a half inch drill bit. I need to turn on, <coughs> turn on the DRO here. We need it for positioning.
Okay, so I'm going to move it down if I get that drill bit in. Drill bit's still a little bit long, isn't it? Well, we'll fix that here in a minute. That ought to be about right. Now then, back to zero. Alright. We're back to zero. And I think this thing is in low. Yep. Looks like a reasonably good speed. Give it a little oil. And see if we can't embiggen this hole. come out the other side. I don't want to snatch the end off another drill bit. Alright. We got a hole embiggened and nobody died. That spells success in my book. Alright, so pretty near centered. At least it was centered on the old hole. Let me get some of this beautiful chips out of the way and let's see I said uh, 3.871 that's how far down we're going to need to go for the next one so we'll crank the old DRO to 3.871 Alright, there we are. 8.71, 8 give or take a tenth or so. And this bit, of course, is not going to start out like that. Uh, shoot. Yeah, I should have pulled it out of there, shouldn't I? Alright, let's, uh, we'll just move around till we can get it out. I want to take a small uh, bit, you know, a uh, little center drill. I want to use a center drill to, to get the hole started, and I've got one here somewhere. It's an old one, and I managed to break at some point. And it's only broken on one end, you know. Like those tires that are only flat on one side on it works this way. All right, back to 3.871. There we are, 3.871, give or take a few tenths. Let's see if this thing will go down far enough to go ahead and drill right there. Just barely, but that'll do. When you're playing hand grenades or horseshoes, that's close enough. And yes, that's a little bit slow for that bit. But it's going to be all right. 
even with a variable speed on the head there where all I gotta do is just crank the little knob. I'm still kind of lazy, huh? Oh well. That's the way us rednecks are. We're lazy. Alright. One of my problems has been not properly fastening work pieces. I've fastened them too loose. Fastened them crooked. I fastened them all center. Putting drill bits in the chucks has been one of my weak points. Alright. Grease him up. Let her rip. And of course, this is still a bit slow for a bit. But it'll get through. At least I think it will. You gotta be careful with stainless steel because the stuff will work hard and while you're working on it and get impossible to cut. I think it's fixing to break through the other side. So, there you go. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't get it too hot and make it hard. Alright. Now I want to put that half inch back in, so I'm going to have to move this thing away from that spot all over again. We'll do it fast. about the right speed for the drill bit. Back to 3.871. Went a little too far. <clears throat> we'll back it up. All right, there we are. 3.871. That's what I wrote down on a piece of paper. Now let's go for it. Feels like we're getting right about to go through. Yep. All right, now it should fit on the end of the vise. Of course, I need shorter half-inch bolts. Those are way, way too long that I use for measuring. So, I'll deburr this and clean it up and then I'll bring you back when I've found some bolts. Now, I don't, uh, I don't necessarily need half inch bolts that long, but it's what I've got. And AVE has a colorful expression to, about using what you've got, which is not good for a family oriented channel. But uh, anyway, I'm using what I got and they will 
to go in the hole without bottoming me out too soon. And I've got to get a wrench to turn them. It's just a tiny bit tight. With most vices, it, it seems to be that the custom is to make the holes everywhere the same size so you can move the jaws around. Sort of makes sense to me. It fits on there just fine, like it did the old vise. All right, we'll move around the other side now. All right, I've made an incremental improvement on it, and I think that it's better than it was because it fits this vise. <laughs> so all these knobs are the ones that I made with my little extruder, if you can call it an extruder. And this guy is adjustable for the height, and then you can bring him over here, and you can run him way down inside the vise, or way back out here outside of the vise. So I think that it's plenty adjustable, and if I need to get even further away, I can always make a little extension, a little post to go in there to move it out. But I think that. Uh, I think that fills the bill for this vise just like it did the old one. And that gives me the Tom Lipton mill stop and the redneck mill stop. So we're in business. I guess even this short of video warrants a, a visit with Bubba. Let's go see what he's up to. Well, it come along deer hunting time and Bubba wanted to go deer hunting and so did all his cousins you know all of them named Bubba so he him and Bubba Joe and Bubba Don and Bubba Bill all of them you know they there's a few others they all got together to go you know out to their deer lace you know and do a little hunting well it seems like nobody liked to cook you know it was a horse job there because you had to get up for everybody else and fix breakfast and then about in the middle of the morning, you had to leave your deer behind and go back to camp and get your dinner cooked. And in the middle of the afternoon, you had to leave your deer behind, go back and cook supper. So they made an agreement that they'd, you know, they'd draw straws to see who was the first cook. And then the first guy to complain would have to take his place. So they, they all drew straws. Bubba Joe was the one that drew the short straw, and he wound up being the cook. And so they got out there and they cooked. Bubba Joe's not no idiot. He figures, well, I, I'll do a little sorry job of cooking and somebody's got to complain. So first day out there, he, he burned about half the stuff, you know, and everybody come in and ate it. And nobody said a word, you know. So he got to think about it. At noon, he went in, he put too much salt in everything and some jalapeno peppers and so on. And everybody come in and ate. They kind of mumbled a little bit but nobody said nothing about the food come supper time he was starting to think you know he's never going to get it done and then he had this bright idea he'd seen a moose walking out there he went and followed the moose tracks and sure enough there were some moose droppings on the ground he picked those up and he made a stew half moose droppings and half stew folks come in for supper and he served that up our hero Bubba, he poof, man, so this stuff tastes like moose droppings, but it's good. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.